Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You a Loco channel. Today we're going to show you some very, very important maintenance you want to do every 30,000 miles on your Ford Flex, Fusion, Escape, uh, Explorer, uh, Edge, anything with the all-wheel drive PTU. You want to change the fluid every 30,000 miles, if not sooner. I'm going to show you why. Let's go over to the vehicle and take a look. All right, now these PTUs are marketed as fill for life, but you're gonna see real quick here why I recommend a change every 30,000 miles. You see it? Nope, you can't see it. You wanna know why? Because the PTU right there is wrapped around the engine's heat, the exhaust tubes here, the transmission's heat, which produces plenty of heat, trust me, and then what's right next to it? Well, let's get a better look. Oh, what's that big guy right there? That's a big old catalytic converter right next to it. Yeah, so the thing's just sitting here with no external cooling, no airflow over it, and about a quart or less of fluid inside of there, and it's just wrapped, just wrapped in heat, and it's cooking inside of there. So you don't wanna let that go. There's a lot of issues with these PTUs, bearing failures, gear failures, and sometimes they explode and take out components around them. Other times they used to develop a noise and uh, start puking out fluid at the vent and get a propane smell because they're overheating inside because the bearings are shot inside. Guess what, replacing one of these, about $1,500, okay? Parts and labor, it's a lot of labor to get up in there. So it's best to just get in here and change your fluid every 30,000 miles, if not sooner. So today we're gonna show you how to do that and get it taken care of. It's not too hard of a job, it's one quart of fluid or less. Not too expensive either. Okay, so here's a good view of the PTU from the top. Uh, so you can see, this is me down below, getting to that drain plug, right to that fill plug. Now what you wanna use is a regular 3 8 ratchet. It shouldn't be torqued down too much. I'm gonna get it up in here, and we're gonna break torque on it. We're gonna get it out of here, okay? And this will allow us to get our suction device up in here to suck out all the fluid inside. Now, once it gets you know loose enough like that, you generally, generally uh, can reach up in here and just spin it off, okay? Like so. Now, make sure your drain pan is ready to go because it may spill out a little bit, which it should, just like so, and that means it's full, okay? It should ooze out just a little bit like that. Now you'll see, let me see if I can get something there. You can kind of see it already, um, but this thing is just blacker and black, and it smells really bad. So let me get you down in here. See this? Get you out of here. Yeah, look at that, that thing is freaking caked. Yeah, so at this point, it's not even collecting any many metal filings in there because it's so caked and covered. This is why you wanna be changing this out. It's not gonna do its job. The fluid's gonna break down and not be doing its job protecting the bearings and the gears in there. Uh, it's a good idea to always change it out. So, let's see. Look at that, blacker than black, it's like tar. So from the bottom here, through this opening, we're gonna put in our suction device deep down inside of here into the sump right there of the PTU. We're gonna suck out as much fluid as possible. Patience is key here. This right here is a setup we're gonna use to suck all that old fluid out of there. Now, this is a professional unit from Capri. Um, for bleeding brakes that uh, provides a lot of suction, but it's a little expensive I'll link to this one and a cheaper model down below in the video description uh, So you guys can get your suction device to do this now and in the future. Okay, so it's gonna come with a nice silicone hose like this and What you want to do is get another section of hose. I think it's eighth inch and Make it about eight ten inches long and we'll stick that down past the gears into the sump of the PTU. And we'll be able to suck it out that way and fit it down in there. Now this is gonna require a lot of compressed air, so make sure you have the compressor on hand and it'll use the Venturi effect here to 
create a draw in a vacuum, okay? When this goes in there, it's gonna be hard to show you, we're gonna get it you know, deep down inside of there and we're gonna have to keep moving it around once it starts sucking dry inside of there to get the little pockets of fluid and get as much out as possible. And like I said, since this fluid is 75, 140, it's very thick. It's a small size tube to get down in there. So it's gonna take some time. So let's let it run and get it as clean, as empty as possible. All right, so this is probably the best angle we're gonna get to kind of show you this procedure. So I'll come up from the back side here where the drive shaft comes in and I'll start working it in as best you can from the top. And with this tube being, you know, eight, 10 inches or so, we're gonna know how far down in we get it. Look at that. You see what I'm pulling out of there? Ugh. Anyways, kind of, oh man, this one's bad. It actually has like chunks of tar up in there. Oh man, see what I mean about the fluid breaking down? Oh, so we'll get it in here and we'll get it sucking and see what we pull out. All right, now once you've drained as much as you can out of the PTU, we can start the filling process. Now what I use is the Motorcraft 75140 because it's a really good rear axle lubricant um, that's specified for these. It's really good stuff. So what you wanna do is use one bottle of this and then we're gonna use a pump like this. I'll link to it down below. Makes it very easy to get it up into that hole in that tight area. Uh, without making too much of a mess. It's pretty cheap too. Uh, so let's go ahead and start the fill process. Now you may want to uh, fill it up, cap it off, drive it for a thousand miles or so, and then redo this procedure if yours is as bad as mine was. I mean, it's it was black, real thick and black inside of there. So we'll probably do this again, revisit this in about a thousand miles uh, to get it back up to par. All right, now once you fill it enough, it'll start flowing out pretty good like this. Let it level out, give it a couple minutes. In the meantime, we can come down here and make sure our fill plug slash drain plug is free of all those metal filings and stuff like that. And then of course, put a new bead of sealant around the outside edge there. Get it ready to go back in. Now going back together, we'll use our cleaned up fill plug with the sealant on it. And it's best to come up over the top here and down to that fill plug, that fill hole, because otherwise it's going to be impossible to get at it from down in here. It's really hard to be using two little fingers trying to do it. So let's do it from the top and get the thread started on there. And then from down below, we can get our ratchet back up in here and get it going once you line it up there it's just really tight in here so again I'll hold it so we can get it started and you want to make sure that you only tighten this so much I mean, really restrict yourself because it, remember, it's just a fill plug. You don't want to crack the case. So let's kind of tighten it until it's snug and that's it. The sealant will do the rest. Okay. There we go. Now once it's capped off like that, we can go ahead and spray the area with some brake clean and wash all this stuff off. 